drive around town. We can do that. I don't want to. Good evening, everyone. Right. That was uh, Jake Lasowski. He's a three-year-old, and he is uh, the son of uh, Tim Lasowski, uh, our future uh, lieutenant who's going to be actually promoted today and sworn in uh, as a, one of our proud, proud firefighters. And uh, if we could all please rise and join in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you. Round of applause for Jake Lasowski. Jake's going to hang with me for a while. <laughs> One of our future firefighters here. So, that's it. Oh, this, oh, this is Ryan. I apologize. Ryan, Ryan H three. Jake is his younger brother. He's a little over one. He's in the back there. So. So my apologies. Sorry, Ryan. And Ryan, you're a student at what, Sunbeams and Rainbow, I heard? Is that true? Cool. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, to make this meeting official, uh, Clerk Spencer, if you could please call the roll, please. Gutenkopf. Here. Pezza. Here. Shea. Here. Leader. Here. Rose. Here. Bram. Here. Kipskin. Here. York. Here. Levin. Here. Healy. Here. Morley. Here. Kennedy. Here. Moliner, Here. Wagner. Here. 14 present, zero absent. 14 present, zero absent. Before I go on to the swearing in, one thing I'm, I forgot to do and I apologize. We had a loss uh, this past weekend of a, of a dear friend and a public servant by the name of Deacon John Maloney. Deacon John Maloney was the deacon at Mary Queen of Heaven. He was actually the first deacon uh, ordained uh, actually in Joliet Diocese. He uh, served uh, Elmer's well, the north side of Elmer's well as well as the south side Elmers, but but because people came from all over to hear Deacon Deacon John. But uh, he was special to me. He actually married my wife and I, baptized all of the, all of the DC Annie kids, and um, he passed away this past weekend. So if you could have a moment of silence for Deacon John Maloney, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. And now for the swearing in of our, of our firefighter, Tim Lasowski, who's actually I'm uh, going to be sworn in here as lieutenant. I want to give a little bio on Mr. Lasowski. Uh, he's 36 years old. He's married. He has obviously two children who are in attendance today. One is Ryan, who's at, on my lap over here. Um, he's been with the Elmhurst Fire Department for 10 years and um, started as a contract medic, medic here in Elmhurst, uh, then went to uh, Park Forest uh, par Fire Department for five years be before coming back home to the Elmhurst Fire Department. He's got a Bachelor's of Science in Fire Science uh, from Southern Illinois University. Uh, he's got a bunch of certifications, uh, including the HAZMAD, co being the Haz HAZMAD quarter, uh, coordinator, and he is uh, a paramedic. Um, uh, he is uh, office uh, degreed from the Office of State Fire Marshal, uh, Fire Officer 1 certification. And if Mr. Tim Lasowski would join me up at the podium to my right, along with his family, uh, I'd like to have you take the oath, please. Ready? Ready, Ryan? And it's one of my favorite things to do is swear in uh, not only police and firefighters, but also to see these guys rise through the ranks. And Tim has definitely uh, been one of those guys that is, has proven worthy and has, has risen through the ranks. And we're happy, happy to see you here today. So, Tim, if you could raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I, Tim Lasowski, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. Do solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Charter, Laws, and Ordinances of the City of Elmhurst. The Charter, the Laws, the Ordinances of the State of Illinois. And of the City of Elmhurst. And the State of, uh, City of Elmhurst. The Rules and Regulations of the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners. The Rules and Regulations of the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of Lieutenant. I will faithfully discharge the duties of Lieutenant. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. God bless you, buddy. Great.
fantastic. All right, next on the agenda, we have a, a recognition of service uh, for a fine gentleman who is now our state representative. Uh, his name is uh, Representative Chris Nibel. Many people remember him because he was up here to my left for, for about two years, and two years prior to that, along with Mayor Marcucci. Um, he's a great young guy that's uh, uh, got a hunger for public service, uh, family guy. Three kids now, Chris? God bless. Three kids. His wife, Faye, is a, a sweetheart that uh, allows him to give back, and, and uh, now he's giving back at the state level, and we know we have our challenges there, but we've got a great voice and Chris and I go down in Springfield to represent Elmhurst and, and uh, but we never had a going away party for Alderman Nibo, now the representative Nibo. So uh, he was kind enough to come back and uh, and if Chris, if you can meet me up by the podium, that'd be great. Tom, do it. We have a, uh, a customary, a customary, uh, tradition that when an alderman uh, retires, uh, leaves, in this case, goes up to a higher office, as, uh, as Mr. Naibo has done, that we give him proper recognition. And um, uh, this is a Distinguished Service Award for Chris Naibo in recognition uh, to devotion, <laughs> devoted service to the city of Elmers. There's the Fifth Ward Alderman from 2007 to 2010. Uh, along with that, along with this plaque and award, we have our, uh, our memorative rocking chair. So, Chris, <laughs> God, God love you. <laughs> we appreciate all your hard work for the city of Elmhurst and now, now, uh, now the service that you're giving to us at the state level. So we, we, we can't, can't say thank you enough for all your help. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We didn't have a party because we're always fiscally prudent here at the Elmhurst City Council, and <laughs> in these times it wouldn't be appropriate. Uh, if you indulge me, I just wanted to take a couple minutes. Um, uh, first of all, thank you. I, I really appreciate this. I was all excited about getting down to Springfield. Last week was supposed to be our first week in earnest with the legislative session, uh, but we were canceled because of snow. So uh, literally tomorrow I will get in my car and drive down for my first day of real work in the Capitol. And uh, I've already seen what my office looks like, if you can call it that. Uh, and I've also seen the office furniture that the state issues to you. So uh, I can tell you that without any hesitation, indisputably, uh, this chair will be the single best piece in that office. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's important because I wanted to let people know, you know, what happens to the chair is I'm not going to use it personally. I'm going to put it down there in, in the office. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful chair. And, and to me, um, this, this chair sitting in that drab, dark office in the Capitol building uh, really offers a good analogy to how I view Elmhurst, and I think many of us do. In a sea of muni municipalities and communities all across the state and all across the country, Elmhurst really shines out and it stands out uh, in the same way that this chair is going to stand out in my office as the single best piece of furniture. And the reason why Elmhurst stands out and why it shines so well uh, is because of the work of, of you people, my former colleagues, uh, City Manager Tom Borchert, uh, our firefighters, our snow removal crew, the police officers, all of our staff, uh, and all of the residents who give so much of their time and energy to our community. So I wanted to let you know how much I appreciate this chair, uh, and I also wanted to let you know um, I, I actually asked for the opportunity to come and pick it up in person, not because I wanted to be recognized, uh, but because I did want to use the occasion to, to make a special announcement. Uh, and that is, there's a lot of new things about our office. One, and if you permit me to use my notes here, one is that I've got a new email address, and I'd like all Elmhurst residents and any resident of the 41st District to know my new email. That's chris at chrisnibo.org. We've also got a new phone number. That's 630-519-3652. And since we are on a tape broadcast here, let me just say those again. That's chris at chrisnibo.org, and the phone number is 630 519-3652. And we've also got a new office location in Lombard. And I wanted to come here and, and share our office location with the Elmhurst community in person. Uh, because as you know, I live in Elmhurst and, and I love Elmhurst and I've, I've chosen to, to live here and raise my family here. Um, but the 41st District is a big community and we represent a lot of communities and, and Lombard is just about a big a portion of the 41st District as Elmhurst is. Uh, and so, although it is with some sadness, 
that the legislative office won't be remaining uh, here in Elmhurst. Uh, I'm excited about the opportunity to locate in Lombard, and that office will be at 318 Westmore Road, Suite A, and that zip code is 60148. But, but having made the decision to, to have our legislative office in Lombard, uh, it's important that I let all of Elmhurst know, the entire community, uh, that my door is always open, and, and I, I look ready, I, I, I'm very excited about the opportunity to represent Elmhurst. Uh, although I won't be working with you anymore, I will be working for you. And although there will not be a legislative office, state legislative office in Elmhurst, there will be a chair in the state capitol with your name on it. So I encourage all Elmhurst residents to, to give me a call whenever you need anything, uh, give me an email, send me an email if you need any help with anything, or uh, if you happen to be in Springfield, please do stop by and, and pay me a visit. Uh, there is a chair with your name on it in my office always, and it'll always be there as long as I continue to have the privilege to serve and work on your behalf. So thank you. It has been always a pleasure to work with all of you, and I appreciate the opportunity to say some remarks. Thank you. Now I will literally go put this in my car for the drive down tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Representative Nibel. We'll have another round of applause for our great state representative. And uh, while I'm up here, before I go on to uh, the next portion of our meeting, uh, we have a new Character Counts president in the city of Elmhurst. And we all know that Character Counts is very, very important uh, to not only State Representative Chris Naibo, who's out there trying to push character every day, um, but to all of our residents, to, to our students, who we, we profess this in school, uh, in the workplace, uh, the pillars of, of, of character uh, are, are very, very important. I, I, I just, I, I'm so elated with the new president that we have. He's got a ton of energy. Uh, he is a person that exemplifies character, and character counts. And his name is Dr. John Devitz. He wants a couple seconds here real quick. Dr. Devitz, coming up. In uh, representing character counts in Elmhurst, the reason I'm here tonight is to congratulate all of you for being such great examples of character and showing how it does count in Elmhurst. And uh, one of our first missions we're going to do immediately is we're going to give out 1,500 T-shirts this week uh, to you guys tonight, as well as our fire, our police, all of our service organizations, and everyone else. Our goal is to give away 10,000 T-shirts this year. Our big supporter we've already met with is Elmer's College student athletes. We've already got 70 people working February 11th uh, this Friday from just Elmer's College football alone helping us for our first fundraiser where we'll be giving out decals and our goal is to have 44,000 vehicles in Elmhurst with a decal that says Elmer's and Elmer's character counts as well as having t-shirts uh, and making it a very positive situation. So we have to thank Elmer's College is doing an awesome job. We, we should have 130 volunteers uh, from Elmer's College this Friday. Um, the, the main goal is Elmer's is such a great town that the goal is not only everyone is going to have 44,000 t-shirts and every car in Elmhurst will have a character count sticker and every house will have that, but our goal is within two to three years is when someone drives through Elmhurst on October 24th, it'll say on your shirt, that's when we'd like you to wear your shirts for sure at least that time, we're going to give away free t-shirts to everyone. So I don't know of any other, uh, any other uh, I looked in the character counts, I don't think there's any other college that will be as supportive as Elmhurst College because it's not usually supported by the college students. And I don't think any town will ever be able to say that every single individual in the town, at no cost to them, will have a Character Counts t-shirt and decal. So thank you very much. Here's your t-shirts. They have the pillars on the back, so Character Counts on the front. Citizenship is one of the pillars, so you all get a t-shirt tonight, fire and police tomorrow, and hopefully in no time the entire town with the school children on up will get them. Thank you very much. Thank you for exemplifying how Character Counts in Elmhurst.
Thanks, Dr. Jevitz. And uh, we definitely have an energetic president for character counts. We appreciate the kind gesture of the shirts. We'll get those passed around, sized up, all that fun stuff. Um, and to number five, uh, which is our written, uh, receipt of written communications and or petitions from the public. At this time, if there is anyone with any written communications and or petitions, if you'd please rise and present those to Clerk Spencer at, the, the, at this time. Anybody? Okay. Hearing none, uh, I would go on to uh, item number six, which is, our public forum which is the public forum portion of the meeting. At this time, is there anybody signed up for public forum? Uh, Clerk Spencer. Yes. Uh, we'll start with Tom Cruise, 868 Sailor. First, I'd like, to say, I'd like to congratulate the city for the uh, snow removal. You, you did a great job. Thank you. Um, our po and this is the, I live, in, live at 868 Sailor. Our power in the South Elmhurst has gone out three times in the last month. It's, it's way more than the 1.2 uh, average that ComEd said to us at their presentation. You know, and I think the mayor uh, kind of intimated about, uh, about that, that, you know, and I, we'd have to say, I, but I, I, I'd say in the south side, it, it an average probably said seven to ten times it goes out in a year. And, and I know ComEd, uh, the next thing, that ComEd said that they, they're going to do some upgrades. Do we have to wait until April for them to do those upgrades? Um, and the, uh, the next thing I would ask, and I really have not got a definitive answer, we haven't got a really definitive answer. Why can't we connect our power grid with the hospital? If you can kind of, and I kind of like some answers maybe tonight before that. When, when, uh, and like I said, ComEd, could they start doing these upgrades right away? The last thing, the ComEd, which is a flood issue, a flood thing about the uh, Sailor and Jackson lift station, there's going to be some uh, upgrades. Why can't we do those right away? Because I don't know about anybody else, I am concerned about the snow that's going to start to melt. And, you know, are we going to start having, you know, floods with that? So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next, we have M Marilyn Aredo, 912 Sailor. Good evening. I'm Marilyn Aredo. I live at 912 Sailor, and I'm going to piggyback on Mr. Cruz. <clears throat> Once again, my issue that I bring forth to you tonight concerns the services of Commonwealth Edison. As I prepared for the predicted blizzard on Tuesday, February 1st, 2011, my greatest fear was that I would be without electrical power. My fear was realized around 6 in the evening. This was the third outage in the 32 days of 2011. Of course, I phoned ComEd as soon as the power went out. And for the first time in my 48 years of living at 912 Sailor, a ComEd representative phoned me to tell me that the power was restored. This gesture told me that this company knows that there is something wrong with circuit W668X the circuit that services my home. On December 13th, 2010, ComEd made a presentation at the city council meeting. And at that time, they showed a chart entitled, Pocket Reliability Focus, indicating the circuits with problems. And the circuit that serves my resident was one of the four on the chart. And that might be the reason for the phone call, a PR gesture to soften the blow. Having said all of this, I come before you and beg for a solution to this ongoing problem. In a month or two, the mounds of snow will be melting how am I going to handle the water if there is no electricity to operate my sump pump? I'm grateful that I did not invest in overhead sewers because without electricity, I 
could not flush the toilet because the ejector pump needs electricity to function. I have also observed when there is an outage, there is a public works truck at the Jackson lift station. <coughs> Why is that? Is it because there's no automatic generator that goes on into action when the power is off? And there has to be a person to turn on the switch? All of these issues surface every time there is an outage. I was hoping that when the hospital was built that our area would be on a different grid, maybe the same one as the hospital. Such was not my luck. When I speak to Elmhurst residents in other areas, Carolyn, they, real quick, you're about 30 seconds past. If you could wrap it up, I'll give you about another 10 seconds to wrap it up. Go ahead, wrap it up, but maybe 10 seconds more, if you could. If you could wrap it up in 10 seconds, that'd be great. <clears throat> my daughter lives a mile north of me, and she has had one outage and that occurred in 207 when a tree branch knocked down a pole and wires were strewn on the street. You on the council come from different areas of Elmhurst and how many of you shared the same outages as those of us on the south end of Elmhurst? I call my area New Orleans Katrina's ninth ward. While listening to WBBM on February 1st, the day of the blizzard, someone said that he was going to Elmhurst to get his mother because she frequent has power outages. Do you know what this is doing to our property values? Forget the good schools. There is flooding and power outages. What can I do? What can you do to improve this? If you want to send my letter to ComEd, please do so. Marilyn, Marilyn. You're, we, you're, about, you're about five minutes into this. I, I try to give you as much time as I could, but and I hope you appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Um, and we will submit the letter, and, I, and we are definitely all over this issue. So, um, Clerk Spencer, does anyone else sign up for public forum? Uh, yes, we have a few more. Claude Pagash, 566 West Gladys. And just to be clear for everybody, we give three minutes. I'll try to give a little bit of cush, but, but um, we, re we really have to get our meetings going, and we've got a lot of people that want to speak. So we, uh, fairness to everybody, we're going to try to keep it to three minutes. Thank you. Mr. Claude? My name is Claude Pagach. I live at 566 West Gladys. Uh, I had the opportunity to read a, the article in the paper about the uh, mayor's speech to the Elmer's business entities, and uh, had a little hard time really appreciating it, I guess. A lot was said, but I don't know if any of it's valid. There was one statement in regards to the average income of people of Elmers. I really don't know where that information came from, but uh, if the mayor wants to drift down to my block, uh, that average is going to kind of get bounced around like a rubber ball. Not unless uh, a couple of millionaires moved in, and I would say multi-millionaires. There aren't that many people on my block that got that kind of money. Also, before I end this, the last time I was up here, I reminded the city manager and the legal department of Elmers that there was a letter in the paper in regards to the mayor, and I wanted their opinion on it. I read nothing on it and heard from neither body. I would like an answer to that question in regards to the mayor. If it's not valid, just a letter in the paper, fine. But if there is any val val validity to it, I really would like to know how the city manager and the legal department feel about it. Thank you. Thank you, Claude. Next, Kathleen Sullivan, 133 Pine Street. Kathleen Sullivan, 133 Pine Street. Um, I kind of got famous by coming to City Council on August 2nd and giving my poem called Inadequate 
as my response to how the city reacted to um, the storms of July 24th when my home was flooded with nine feet of water and my neighborhood was completely surrounded. Um, in some ways, the city did better, but we had mentioned several things at that time, and they didn't work that well in this storm. Back in the fall, when it was going to be windy one night, we got an email. We didn't get any email. I didn't get any emails after about this storm that came from the city. I did get them forwarded from one of the groups of aldermen that did send them out. My alderman did not. Um, I didn't get, I, the city's website at 4.30 in the morning wasn't updated. I believe it got updated at noon on February 2nd, which was day two into the storm. Um, I didn't get the phone call that my neighbors called me to tell me that they received with the mayor's name on it, despite the fact that city manager Borchardt personally took my information and two weeks later I even called and spoke to the lady downstairs who enters them into the computer and she said my numbers were entered. And not only did we enter our home telephone number, but because that phone service was called into question as to whether or not it works for your your, your auto dialing system that you use. We also registered both of our cellular telephones. None of the three telephones received the message. And so I don't only speak for the fact that that happened to me. I also am registered for the text messages. I didn't get any of those, okay? So I've tried every way I can to get information from the city and other than seeing it on their website and getting it from some people who forward it from some aldermen, I don't get it. And so if I don't get it, I'm pretty sure the people who don't come here all the time don't get it. And that includes some of my neighbors who are disabled, some people who have children to raise and so they're busy shuttling them at night and can't be here for council meetings. And so I was really disappointed in that. And that's part of why I volunteered for the task force and I hope we can get working on some of those items because I'd really like to see them improve and I'd like to help. In addition to that, um, I was di really disappointed to hear tonight that the Public Works Committee had a meeting when I've been to the last two meetings because of the fact that they're working on the contract for the issue that's near and dear to my heart, which is fixing flooding in Elmhurst. And we didn't receive any contact, and three of us that are sitting here didn't know about it, and we've been at the last two Public Works Committee meetings. Additionally, the people who I've seen from the task force who made it to those committee meetings aren't even here tonight. So I think that none of us knew. And I'm rather disappointed because when we had the meeting on the January 24th, we didn't mention that there would be a special meeting tonight. And so I would have liked to have been informed of that. I did get a task force text with regards to um, some stuff for ComEd. Kathleen, if you could wrap it up, I'll give you about another 10 minutes or 10 seconds or so. Yeah, I don't need 10 minutes. 10 minutes, That's 10 minutes, minutes so I apologize. <laughs> and, and then I will say that of the four affected areas from ComEd, I live in Whiskey 3578, and we only had flickers. So maybe they're doing something. Thanks. Thank you. And lastly, um, Frank Slyko, 869 South Sailor. Slyko. Good evening, my name is Frank Slaco. Um, I'd like to address this, the hidden cost of these, of Commonwealth Edison's interruptions to our service. Many of us are experiencing personal costs involving repairs of electrical devices. My, I have experienced three uh, my CPAP machine, the fuse was uh, blown out. The capacitor of my refrigerator was blue. And my dishwasher suffered a failure of the fuse. We're experiencing power surges and power <coughs> diminishing service from Commonwealth Edison. I'd just like to call your attention to that hidden cost to those people in the Southwest Elmers who are experiencing it we don't even realize it. It's another hidden tax. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That concludes public forum. All righty, I will now officially close the uh, public forum section of our meeting and uh, go on to our consent agenda. At this time, I'd ask if there's anyone that has any questions on any particular item, may want to vote no. At this time, please uh, indicate if, uh, if at all possible. I don't have those removed. Anybody like to remove anything from the consent agenda? Hearing none, I ask for a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda in its entirety. Uh, Alderman York, the second from Alderman Gutenkoff, and uh, uh, Clerk Spencer, if you'll please call the roll, please. York. Aye. Gutenkoff. Aye. Hezza. 
Aye. Shea? Aye. Leader? Aye. Rose? Aye. Graham? Aye. Tipskin? Aye. Levin? Aye. Healy? Aye. Morley? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Wagner? Aye. 14 ayes, 0 nays. 14 ayes, 0 nays. The consent agenda passes in its entirety. And um, on to item 8, reports and, elect, uh, reports and recommendations of appointed elected officials. Updates from myself. Um, uh, first thing I would like to, uh, uh, to address is um, some of the, some of the uh, ComEd issues. We, we, I have a letter that's going to be going out to those on the task force. You know, many of you guys, you all in the audience are on the flood task force, stormwater task force, I should say. And um, uh, this, this letter will be indicating and updating you as to uh, our next steps. We are in the process of firming up this agreement with Christopher Burke and RJ and Engineering. Um, the uh, letter is going to indicate that we are going to be breaking into subcommittees and it's going to be a request from all of you as to what subcommittee you'd like to be on by, priorita by, pri by prioritizing you know, A, B, or C. Uh, those subcommittees are public sanitary system infrastructure, stormwater system uh, public infrastructure, individual house flood proofing, public education, and Commonwealth Edison and electric power. So as you can see, we, we've given this issue of ComEd its whole subcommittee uh, because we, we, we feel it's that much of an issue. Uh, and I think all of us are in agreement, not only in the audience, but up here, uh, especially those that live in the south end of town, including many of the elected officials, including myself, who lives in the fifth ward, and Alderman Wagner in the seventh ward, Alderman Mulliner in the seventh ward. So, so but, you know, this is a problem. We're going to address it. We're going we're gonna to have you be part of that process to help solve the problem. So get ready to dig in and, and do a lot of work with ComEd. ComEd agrees to, to be here in those subcommittee meetings. We will have a representative from ComEd. So I think that's a good start. Um, and uh, I think we've got buy-in from, from our number one power vendor in town. So, um, and, and while this last storm, we did have a power outage. We had a line go down in Oak Brook. I, I did have the call go out, and I, I apologize for some reason if you were not on that phone call. I, I apologize. Um, but I know many people were because uh, a lot of people reached out to me and said thank you. Uh, a lot of seniors that uh, uh, got phone calls from neighbors that got wellness checks thanked me. Um, uh, we will work with our vendors to, uh, to see exactly what, what the, the glitch was there. But, um, uh, you know, we had... We had probably the third worst storm event since 1967, or actually ever in the history, from what I understand. And we had a line go down in Oak Brook. Um, to, to ComEd's credit, they I believe they got it going in about an hour, an hour, hour and a half. I know Alderman Wagner and Alderman Mulliner were all over ComEd, as well as myself and staff. Um, you know, sometimes these things do happen. We understand. The frustrating thing I think we all have is when it's a beautiful blue sky day and all of a sudden power goes out, and we say to ourselves, "Well, why is this?" So. But um, uh, I think they were quick to respond. I indicated that in my, my phone call out to the city, uh, to the constituents, that uh, while we apologize and we have no control over ComEd to a degree, I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna politically do whatever we can to, to motivate them to, to uh, come up with fixes to our infrastructure issues. Um, they were very responsive, and, and given the climate and given what uh, was thrown at us last week, um, I think considering everything, they, they did a decent job, so. Um, this letter will be going out to every single task force member. This is going out today. Just wanted to give, give you a heads up on that. It will also, I believe, will that be posted on the website, uh, Mr. Borcher, as well? Yeah. So two, two ways to get this. One, it will be mailed to each one of your houses. Um, and we appreciate your volunteerism in, in this process. And also, if you want to look at it uh, tonight or today, uh, it is on the website as we speak. So, um, Sorry, that will be posted tomorrow. Well, it will be posted tomorrow. I apologize. <coughs> what is on the website right now? is the next item, uh, which I think is very important, and, um, and that is the, the search for our next city manager. Uh, we, have been, we have been privileged, delighted, uh, very fortunate to have a city manager that's uh, been with us for, I believe, since 1984 as a city manager and for 40 years as a city employee. Okay. Um, tough shoes to, to fill, and uh, we, uh, we, have, we have hired a uh, search firm, Heidi Voorhees and Associates, who's a former city manager of Evanston, uh, or Wilmette, I believe, uh, to actually help us conduct that search. Uh, as a council, we have agreed uh, that on February 23rd uh, of this month, between uh, 7.30 and 9 o'clock, we will have 
uh, a, a town hall meeting, an open house, so to speak, uh, to hear the uh, constituents' ideas of what we need to see in our next city manager. Uh, that survey is also online uh, as of right now, actually, actually as of this afternoon. So if you can't make the meeting on the 23rd for some reason, uh, that will be also posted in our newsletter, uh, this event, um, and we're probably going to be doing another phone call to make sure we get as much participation in this as possible. Uh, there is an online survey that you can fill out and get back to, uh, get back to us. Uh, it's a very, very important decision, not only for myself, but everyone here at, at the council, and, and really for, for everyone uh, that's a resident of this town. Uh, I believe back in the 50s, uh, the um, city of Elmhurst voted a city manager form of government so that the day-to-day -day operations are run by the city manager, not the mayor. We're policymakers up here. The aldermen and, and the mayor are, are people that are given their time uh, working full-time jobs. Some of us are retired, but, but I know I have a full-time job and three kids at home and mortgage and all that fun stuff. So, so for me, I, I'm up here giving back as a policymaker. Uh, I try to put as much time in as I can, and sometimes it does feel like a full-time job, but, uh, but that's okay. Uh, that's what we signed up for. And, um, uh, but the city manager runs, runs the town on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, he deals with the complaints, he deals with the personnel, he deals with uh, economic development, he deals with culture and historical issues because we have a town I think that's really unique and has a museum and a one-room schoolhouse and uh, he deals with the schools and the parks. So, so this person um, that we're looking for uh, is a very, very critical person uh, that we need to hire and we need to hear from you the residents as to what you think uh, the qualities are in this person. Should he be a resident, or he or she should be a resident? Should, um, uh, should they be pros in stormwater? We have some major stormwater issues. Uh, should they be in, uh, pros in economic development? Should they understand history and culture? All, all these questions uh, and ideas and comments are what we're looking to hear from from you. So uh, again, if, uh, if you can't make it, we do have the survey, but I would encourage everyone uh, to attend February 23rd, it's a Wednesday, between the hours of 7.30 e in the evening and 9 o'clock. Um, myself, and I'm, I'm sure many of the aldermen will be present to listen as well, along with uh, Ms. Voorhees, who's the actual person doing the search uh, along with us. So uh, that's, that's about it from me, City Manager Borchard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to add to the uh, report on the agenda regarding stormwater, a uh, first quick overview of the, of the public uh, safety, police, fire, and public works response, uh, which is ongoing relative to this blizzard of 2011 that it's been, uh, been, been referred to. Uh, the, good news, the good news is the governor has already declared it a disaster should it qualify through the technical uh, re criteria of a, of a disaster based on the amount of damages incurred by a county, and in DuPage County, uh, there needs to be there needs to be approximately three million dollars in in damages sustained by public entities, uh, cities, park districts, libraries, school districts. Uh, Chief uh, Chief Cops, as the coordinator, uh, uh, Don Novak has coordinated the Elmhurst community, public uh, governments, school, library, park and certainly the city, we're gathering the costs incurred by those entities and we'll be reporting them on to the DuPage County ESDA. Uh, it's estimated that the expenses in DuPage County will exceed the dollars necessary to qualify. The governor's already declared it a disaster. With those two checks in the box, it goes on to Washington and there's a potential is, is Washington, if Washington declares it a, a uh, a disaster, some financial assistance will flow back to DuPage County. Uh, the event has certainly surpassed uh, the budget uh, in a significant fashion. Work is ongoing still with the snow hauling and removal operation. We were in a 12 hour rotating, 12 on, 12 off uh, rotation for plowing and then hauling hauling out of the central business district, the commercial areas, some of the heavier, uh, heavier uh, industrial areas. There's no place to put the snow. It had to be uh, loaded, hauled, and, and disposed of. Fortunately, Elmhurst has negotiated a, a, a intergovernmental agreement or a public-private agreement with uh, 
uh, DuPage County and the Elmer Chicago Stone Company, wherein Elmhurst is allowed to haul snow and dump it on the south edge of the Elmer Chicago Stone Quarry uh, Reservoir, and then with help of the Elmer Chicago Stone Company and with the city of Elmhurst assisting, that snow is, is loaded off the, uh, the storage area and dumped into the hole. Elmhurst has loaded that area uh, six times and emptied it six times. We're presently filling it a seventh time. Uh, there's a lot of snow that's been hauled off of uh, area streets and hauled to that location. Uh, I think the public works crew did an outstanding job. Elmer's police and fire during the actual blizzard did an outstanding job of responding to emergencies. Uh, to my understanding, we, we sustained no serious injuries uh, during the event or after the event that I'm, that I'm aware of associated with the blizzard itself. So. Uh, the plowing and hauling and uh, cleanup operations will, will continue during the day, and I believe even there's an a evening haul out this evening scheduled. Uh, for the community, if there are unsafe situations that they're aware of, uh, please bring that to the attention of the uh, manager's office. We'll delegate uh, uh, the assignment to Public Works to try to alleviate the, the danger situation. I think though the streets have been plowed to where they're gonna be to, uh, to plow them any further is pushing some of that snow that's against the curb and the gutter then back into driveways. That's an aggravating thing. I live in town, they plow my driveway in, it's aggravating, I shovel it out, it gets plowed back, I shovel it out, it gets plowed back. It's a necessary evil uh, till you get to a certain point and then we stop plowing. So I, I, think, I think that's gonna, we're at where it's going to stay now for a while. Um, in some cases, the line of sight at an intersection might be seriously impeded because of the high si size and height of that uh, windrow of snow. Those situations are being now reviewed by the city's engineering group with then work orders forwarded to the public works uh, uh, cleanup crews. Again, we're hopeful that uh, we'll qualify. It's kind of good news, bad news. We're hopeful we're going to qualify <coughs> as a disaster. Uh, that would allow for perhaps 75 to 80 percent of uh, expense reimbursement to flow back to, uh, to communities. Again, Elmhurst Park District, the Elmhurst School District, uh, our sister Elmhurst Library Agency are, are responding to Mr. Novak's request and we'll, we'll complete our application by the end of the week. Relative to the status of progress on the Stormwater Comprehensive Plan, uh, we did have a short public works committee meeting this evening. It, it was scheduled at the end of the last committee meeting, so I, I'm, I'm sorry that folks at the last meeting didn't, didn't hear that, but it wasn't intended to not be uh, attended by folks. The request was by the committee that city staff report to the committee in a short meeting this evening as to the cash flow status uh, of the city staff's plan on paying the anticipated uh, consultant charges for the nine month period that the engineering study was, was identified to be, be uh, going forth. That cash flow plan was uh, identified and created uh, in detail by finance staff. We distributed it to the Public Works Committee uh, this evening, discussed it uh, uh, with the intent of sharing that information, making it clear that there is a, a plan that provides for available funds to pay the engineering necessary for this fiscal year and next fiscal year, the necessary expenditures will be put in the 11-12 budget, which is still being worked on by the city staff. So uh, there are, from my perspective, checks in those boxes appropriately. Dollars are available from the Elmhurst finances to pay the uh, engineer and in, in, a, in a fashion according to the engineer's uh, anticipated progress. That was to allow the Public Works Committee to see that in advance. They could formulate any additional questions, ask staff those questions next Monday night when the committee will be dealing with that matter in its full and complete details. Self-imposing upon themselves, the committee has identified the end of that evening at, the, at a point where they would be finishing their report, which would come to the full city council, well in advance of the second 
council meeting in February, understanding that it would be most advantageous to have the consultant uh, mobilized and on the streets of the city of Elmhurst doing their engineering analysis beginning March 1st. So the committee has identified that schedule for the staff to complete its support work for the committee, for the committee to complete its work, to offer then their full report to the full city council for the meeting of February 22nd, which is the Tuesday of uh, following the Monday holiday. Typically, the second council meeting is the, th is the third Monday of the month. That Monday is a federal holiday, so that meeting will push till Tuesday. So we would hope that uh, the plans can be fulfilled, that the work will be verified as appropriate, that the committee report can be developed to allow the council to review it in its detail as appropriate uh, on that uh, Tuesday, February 22nd. And the consultant has been tentatively informed and notified of that schedule and informed to get mobilized. Nothing's sure, nothing's done. Yogi Berra, it's not over till it's over, but we believe that it will be over relative to that contract on that time frame. so that the consultant will be in Elmhurst uh, 1st of March. Um, Mr. Kennedy, uh, anything to further? I just want to echo um, basically what you said. Um, the, again, the meeting tonight was an information sharing amongst the committee so that when we get together next week, we will take all the time necessary to develop the, uh, to the, the report so that we're back here in two weeks plus a day to present that to the full council so that we can again have Christopher Burke and RJN ready to roll for, uh, for March 1st. So uh, I apologize for anyone that was, that was confused about the, the meeting tonight. We did talk about it at the end of our last committee meeting. Among, among a lot of other things and so uh, it was really just information sharing we're gonna go through that same information again next week as a just a refresher for everyone along with everything that Christopher Burke has presented to us so far and, and formulate that report so we've uh, again put that hard stop at the end of uh, February to be able to have Burke ready to go so uh, that we get this work done during the spring and summer season so that by the end of the year um, by the time we're I think here by October, I think, November, we'll have a completed comprehensive plan and we'll know exactly where our number one, number two, number three issues are and it's our job then to figure out how we're gonna pay for that and, and what priority we're gonna do things. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. And I would, would add, uh, Mayor DeCiani announced uh, his, his uh, information letter to the task force. Uh, we'll make sure that the full city council gets that electronically and uh, if need be, we can certainly make hard copies of it. From my perspective, this work is coming together. What work, that work basically of the community, the, the uh, affected neighbors, the stakeholders, the citizens, uh, uh, mayor's task force, city council's in effort. Uh, now it's all coming together as planned with this appropriate scope of work uh, with two fine engineering firms, uh, now focused on a target that's been identified by the community. That engineering work now will be commencing and the task force will be divided up into five study groups to certainly not do the engineering, but review the engineering, review the work that's been identified and provide feedback to the city staff, city council, and to the city's consultant as to, as to is it appropriate? Is it is it complete? Is anything been missed? Is is anything yet need to be analyzed? It hasn't been analyzed. And then once the information begins to flow back, to help with the identified appropriate level of service, the uh, uh, expectations of the task force will be to assist and comment on what would be an appropriate level of service for protection for the Elmer's community after the engineer has their work completed relative to what can be done and what the costs are with the work that can be done along with then the benefits of what is accrued, then the community needs to figure out what, what it wishes to essentially buy relative to a flood control plan. So I think the stage is set for uh, a, a very appropriate and meaningful and significant for Elmhurst analysis to uh, be completed with then work to be achieved at, will do as designed. Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, my, my I guess, uh,
comments are in regards to some of the concerns stated earlier of Elmhurst communication to residents. I want to at least address that somewhat as best as I can. Um, I, I honestly want to put out there that Elmhurst today does a lot, lot better communication. We've come a long way compared to even a year ago, even a few months ago, in regards to the ability to sign up on the Elmhurst website for text message notifications as well as email notifications, as well as doing these automated and, and robocalls. I, I am not going to sit up here and say that we are perfect, we're far from it yet. Um, I myself have never received a robocall, um, even though that my uh, uh, phone numbers are, are on the books here in the city of Elmhurst as well. Uh, but we're going to continue to work on that as best as all possible. One of the improvements that I want to recommend here tonight, which was mentioned uh, by one of the residents on my way in, is about when a committee meeting is on a non-typical committee meeting night, like this evening for the Public Works Committee meeting. Um, it's probably already posted or probably was posted, which I didn't verify on the city website, but you got to dig a little deep to um, find that information. My recommendation would be to post it on the um, home webpage of the city of Elmhurst as a news flash and possibly even send out, you know, as part of the um, email notifications that we do for other, other instances. It's nothing along the lines of trying to, uh, um, hide this meeting because there wasn't really anything secretive or, um, for lack of a better word, exciting in the committee meeting this evening. Uh, but it is something that we can do better on when it's on a non-committee night to publicize it a little bit better. So that's my recommendation for uh, the city staff. Thank you. Okay. Paul Mulliner. Yeah, just a, a couple of things. One is uh, I appreciate the fact that there's a letter going out to the task force because uh, I've gotten a number of calls from task force members now asking what's going to go on with it. And it's good to hear that there's a letter asking them to where they're going to sign up and you know what activities they can be involved in so that they can get their input into this, this process. Uh, so that's a, that's a plus as far as I'm concerned. Power issues. Um, I know that's part of our task force. Um, I'm hoping that we don't drag our feet on that one at all. Um, I'm at the point right now where I feel like the city and I feel like the aldermen who are sitting up here uh, should join in moving forward to going down if we need to to Lisa Madigan's office and filing a complaint with Lisa Madigan's office. The Senate board is <laughs> we no longer are getting any response, and I'm sorry, but you know what? Yeah, we had a storm. We were the only area in the city of Elmhurst that went down with the exception of a few individual homes here and there. This happens consistently and constantly. It's time for us to put a stop to it. ComEd's not listening. They send in their PR people. Their PR people are great. They're responding to us terrifically. But we need to get past their PR people and we need to get to the people who can make something happen. This has got to change in the seventh ward. When you see the people in a panic in the seventh ward, and I saw them in a panic this time when the power went out, this is ridiculous. This is not the type of town I want to live in. This is not the type of town you want to live in. We need to do something. And I think we need to make a recommendation as a council to go to Madigan's office and say, take care of this problem for us. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Um, before I go on to other business, I do want to give kudos to Mr. Uh, our Public Works Director, Mike Hughes, uh, our, our Chiefs uh, for Police and Fire, uh, both Cap and Neubauer. Uh, we, we saw the storm coming. We beefed up. We went, we went from 8s to 12s. Uh, City Manager Borchard uh, opened up the checkbook, and uh, we, we had to do what we had to do. We had to clean up this town. And um, talking to other communities and seeing what's, what's happened around us, I think, I think you know, again, nothing, it wasn't perfect, but I think our guys did it pretty darn good job given what was thrown at us and uh, I believe it was the night of the storm we were at 95 percent passable streets and by noon the next day we were at b roughly about a hundred percent with the exception of a handful of valleys etc that just you know you had a hard time getting to but but overall I think the effort was great uh, we had a bunch of I think we had four or five water main breaks when it's how many six nine okay we had four one day, and obviously we had five the next. Uh, we had a little chain issue at Myrtle, um, and I got to tell you, our guys st stepped up. Nobody was hurt, thank God. Um, and uh, you know, these guys earned their keep when they're digging, you know, eight-foot holes and fixing water mains when uh, when it's 
zero out there and, and there's th two, three foot of snow coming down. So, so kudos to the guys. Um, we really appreciate all your help, the Chiefs for stepping up and uh, for all the rank and foul guys that many of which were here today. Uh, but really, I think exemplify what, what Elmhurst is all about, and it's quality of service and doing the best we can what we got. So, so and thank God we didn't have to make those massive cuts in public works, and these are the times where we, I think, appreciate, you know, uh, we were able to get those guys to, to do a zero and uh, not have to lay anybody off And uh, as far as increase this past year, and I, I think they paid back in spades this year because if we were minus 10 or 20 guys there, uh, this, this, this blizzard would have been a little bit different. So. So uh, I thank the council for, for working that along as well as the, the, the union uh, and, and the rank and file for, for helping us. So with that, uh, other business, anybody with other business? Anybody? Announcements? Oh, Alderman Gutenkopf. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, this past fall, Elmhurst Safe Routes to School Committee was formed. It's comprised of representatives from area elementary and middle schools and Safe Routes to Schools has recently completed a grant to the Illinois Department of Transportation for funds to enhance its efforts. Recently, the Active Transportation Alliance recognized the efforts of Elmhurst Safe Routes to Schools Committee with an award at its yearly volunteer banquet. Keely Witzel, the SRTS representative for Hawthorne School, and Rebecca Clancy, the SRTS committee mm -hmm. chair, accepted this award on behalf of the larger committee. So I'm really pleased to say that they've done some great work and were recognized by this prominent area organization. You can find more information at www.saferoutesinfo.org and you can help provide safe routes to schools for all children in Elmhurst by ensuring that your sidewalks are clear and safe and passable, especially in this heavy snow. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman York. Um, yet to uh, piggyback along with what Alderman Gutenkopf is, I'd like to first of all thank Public Works, but also thank a lot of the citizens uh, in this community who did an outstanding job. I happen to live on a corner lot myself, and um, I, I know on uh, uh, it was Wednesday morning or whatever, I was out busting through a snowdrift up to my chest with my snowblower to open up the paths because we live on the safe route to Hawthorne School, and we live on the safe, safe route to the Metro train. So um, I'd like to thank a lot of other of uh, my neighbors and, and other residents of Elmhurst as I drive around who keep their sidewalks clear and those entryways uh, across the streets clear. Um, so I'd like to say thanks for that. And then not to turn this into a special uh, sports center edition on Monday nights, but uh, Elmhurst resident Mark Wilson was at it again today, uh, winning a two-hole playoff and uh, has won his second PGA tournament of the, of the season this year. So. Congratulations to Mark Wilson. Um, it's definitely worth uh, announcing to the, the public uh, an outstanding achievement. Absolutely. Very nice. Anybody else for announcements? Cool. Mm -hmm. Alderman Kennedy. I just want to keep the Mike Hughes love fest going for another thing. <laughs> <laughs> to say that, um, the guys just did a phenomenal job, and you got to do hats off to everyone. I was in, I was downtown Chicago Friday night. I work in Elf Grove, and hands down, Elmhurst was by far better than any one of those. If anybody was downtown, it's like a war zone. Still is. Yep. Unbelievable. But in Elk Grove, I don't know who runs that, but it ain't Mike Hughes. <laughs> so <laughs> just can, congratulations. You guys did a phenomenal job. You know, you obviously have people that know what they're doing that are, have been well trained and, uh, and done a great job. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Any other announcements? Hearing none, ask for a motion to adjourn. Alderman Morley, Alderman Hipskin with a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 We're adjourned.